So we observed that the behavior of a VLSI system in terms of its uh, reliability changes a lot depending on the phase uh, on, on the phase of life of the product. So in, uh, in infant mortality, failure rates start really high and then can, uh, start to drop. In useful life, we have a constant failure rate. Hopefully that failure rate is low. And then where out we have a failure rate that starts low at the useful life level and then starts to shoot up. Surprisingly, there is a single mathematical function that represents all three phases in the life of a product. And this is the Weibull function. So we can use it to write a probability density function, uh, f t of t, equal to beta over lambda into t over lambda to the power of beta minus 1 e to the power of minus t over lambda to the power of beta. Now, t is the uh, variable of this PDF, of this probability density function, and it, it represents time. So f t of t is basically the uh, probability that we will have a failure. And the uh, variable of this PDF is obviously time. So it is a function of time. So f of t is basically the PDF that we have a failure at time t. Beta and lambda are both parameters of this probability density function. But lambda is actually kind of a, a more important parameter because it represents the failure rate of the system. So it represents how uh, fast the system uh, fails. And it, it just kind of um, encompasses the quality of the product, how good the product is. Uh, the lower the lambda, the better the product, because lambda, as we will see, basically in, uh, uh, encompasses all the information about useful life failure rate. Beta, on the other hand, encompasses information about the phase uh, in which we are. If beta is less than 1, then we have a function that more or less describes the uh, failures in infant mortality, which means that the failure rate starts really high at lower t and then drops quickly as t increases. So with beta less than 1, we're describing the probability of failures in the, uh, in the infant mortality stage. Now, with beta higher than 1, specifically with beta around 3, for example, the function reduces to a Gaussian distribution. So it becomes a normal distribution, with the probability of failure being normal. Uh, when beta is equal to 3, uh, this kind of signifies the start of the wear out stage. As beta increases above 3, the probability of failure starts to increase really high. And eventually, with beta around 10, uh, it, it almost becomes certain that all components will fail, which indicates late wear out where all of the products are weeded out. So around beta equals 1 is where useful life is. Because around beta equal to 1, the probability density function reduces into an exponential distribution, where it becomes 1 over lambda to the power of e, the power of minus t over lambda. So this is the probability density function with beta equal to 1, and it is the probability density function in the useful life stage. So if you get the uh, expected value of this, of this probability density function, it is actually equal to lambda. And if you look at the expected value, it has a unit of time. So lambda actually has a unit of time. So this expected value, it's an expected value of a time variable, so it obviously has a unit of time. So what does lambda represent? Lambda represents the average value of seeing a failure and then seeing another failure. So it's the average amount of time that you spend between failures. We actually kind of, we saw that before when we talked about uh, metastability of all things, because actually metastability is a reliability problem. So the mean amount of time that you spend between failures has a specific name and it's called mean time between failure. This is a very, very important parameter. It is the expected value of the PDF and it is simply the parameter lambda. So again, what does it mean? It means that if you have a product that fails, what is the average amount of time that passes before another product fails? In some systems where the failure is reversible, it could also mean 
if, if the system fails and you reset it, how much time would go before another failure occurs? It is obvi obviously important because it represents how good the product is. The larger the MTBF, the better the product. For example, if you introduce a microchip into the market and the MTBF is one year, then that means that if a, a, a processor fails for, for one of your customers, a whole year would have to pass before another processor fails for another customer. More or less, that's what more or less it means. Of course, this is on average because this is a st statistical process. So the higher the MTBF, the better the product and the more reliable it is. So the objectives of, of, of our design are to have a lower lambda, which is uh, to have a, a, higher, a higher lambda, excuse me, which means more time between failures and also to bring the onset of useful life earlier to push the onset of wear out later. So what's the uh, reciprocal of lambda? The reciprocal of lambda is 1 over lambda, which has a unit of pair time. And what does it represent? It represents failure rate. Because if MTBF, if uh, we take the reciprocal of MTBF, of mean time between failures, then it is basically the average amount of times that failures occur per unit time, which is your failure rate. When we talk about reliability, it is often common to talk about the reliability of systems in series and systems in parallel. So what does that mean? This can be confusing for, uh, for us specifically because we deal with circuit design a lot because it doesn't have to do with the connection of, of subsystems at all. It doesn't mean that the subsystems are connected in series or that they are connected in parallel. In terms of reliability, a series connection of subsystems and a parallel connection of subsystems basically talks about which systems or subsystems are necessary for functionality and which are redundant. So let's just imagine a case where you have a chip and that chip has four subsystems or you have a PCB and it has four chips, right? And the question is, what is the reliability of this PCB in terms of the reliabilities of its individual chips? Or what is the reliability of this chip in terms of its individual subsystems? So let's take the case of the PCB because it applies in the same way to the case of the, of the microchip. You have four chips. Now, will this PCB function properly if any of these microchips fail? If the answer is no, it will not function properly, then these microchips in terms of systems are connected in series. It really doesn't matter how they are connected in terms of circuits, but they are a series system of, uh, of, uh, of components, meaning that they all have to function in order for the entire system to function properly. So let's assume that each of these uh, subsystems has an MTBF, uh, which is different from the other subsystems so that they have an MTBF1, an MTBF2, and so on. What is the mean time between failure for the entire system uh, in terms of the uh, mean time between failure of its components? And in that case, the mean time between failure of the entire system is 1 over the summation of 1 over the MTBFs of its individual components. So this kind of looks like the uh, resistance of uh, a bunch of resistors in parallel, right? Uh, and it makes sense because this MTBF is going to be lower than the lowest of the individual MTBFs. And that makes sense. The system as a whole, as a whole is less reliable than the least reliable of its components because it is, a, of course, going to be weaker than its weakest link. So... If we have a parallel connection of components, on the other hand, the mean time between failure for the entire subsystem is going to be the summation of the MTBFs of the individual subsystems, which means that the mean time between failure is going to be larger for the system as a whole than for its components. And recall that mean time between failure, the higher the better, right? So that makes sense. Because what do we mean by a parallel connection of components? We mean redundant components. So, I mean, we have system A and another copy of system A and a third copy of system A. If this copy fails, we still have these two. If 
two of them fail, we still have a third. And so the mean time between failure is going to be larger and it's going to keep getting larger the more redundant components you add. Now, this kind of connection of parallel systems, of redundant systems, is usually more common in mechanical systems rather than in VLSI. In VLSI, we normally don't add redundant systems unless you, you have a very sensitive application, like, for example, space applications or satellites. Systems, basically, where you do not, do not have the luxury of replacing a subsystem that fails. In that case, yes, you, will, you would want to increase the mean time between failures because a failure in that case is kind of catastrophic. It means the end of the project.